How's it going, everybody? Monday morning quarterback, episode 207. It's Tuesday, but yesterday was a holiday. So you're going to see today's video uh, on Tuesday. Uh, hope you uh, all had a great four-day weekend. Um, tonight's topic, we're going to talk about torsion arms and how they affect the overall spring rate um, <clears throat> on your race car. So cool little topic we filmed in the shop. Uh, first, a question that came in last week, and that is when um, raising and lowering the rear radius rods on the back of the car, what does that do in the easiest answer is as you raise them um, it adds drive to that corner so if you raise the left rear you'd get a little more left rear drive if you raise the right rear you'd have more right rear drive um, lower them you're taking drive away um, so quick quick little answer uh, on that so um, <clears throat> Please continue to ask questions. That helps drive our conversation and gives us uh, ideas for the next topic as we do these every every single Monday um, on a normal week. Uh, but without further ado, we'll cut away to that shop video and then come right back. How's it going? We're back in the shop for another Monday morning quarterback. We're continuing our discussion on the back of the car, um, but today we're going to talk about torsion arms and how they affect spring rate. And uh, really, this could pertain to the front of the car too. So there's a few things. Um, when you're trying to calculate what your actual spring rate is with a torsion bar that come into effect. The, <clears throat> the length of the torsion bar, um, the diameter of the torsion bar, the effective length of the torsion bar, um, which those are all pretty much fixed, right? When you buy a torsion bar, depending on what brand you buy, um, it's gonna be a given effective length and then what size bar you buy. We've done previous videos on torsion bars and how you measure those things. But one of the key components to your overall spring rate that's often overlooked is the torsion arm. So uh, the length of the torsion arm is going to um, change what your actual spring rate is. Obviously, the longer the arm is, the softer your spring rate's gonna be. Um, and how you would measure that would be from the center point, a um, little difficult to measure with a bent arm, but the center point to the center pickup. So like this, you'd measure from the center point to wherever the center of the heim is picking up on the axle. Or if you're on the front axle, you would measure from the center point to where it's center on the axle. So like on this right front, it's nine and a half inches. So that would be the length of the arm. Now the length of the arm, that's only one uh, key component to your overall spring rate. The other is how stiff this arm is. So you think of this solid arm and you wouldn't uh, imagine any deflection with it. Um, but when you go to like a bent arm, that's gonna offer more deflection. How much the arm is pocketed out, the thinner that arm is, the more the arm will deflect, the more spring rate you give it. And then the closer that pocket is to this splined area, um, will have a lot more deflection too because all the force is back here. The other thing that'll have a great effect on the overall stiffness of the torsion arm is what material it's made out of. So when we've ran these across our torsion bar dyno and actually tried to rate torsion arms, um, we've seen up to a 25% difference on the sprint car side, just brand to brand. Same length, same offset, just different brands and how they machine it, how they pocket it, and potentially what type of aluminum they make it out of. Um, we've seen up to a 25% difference. Now, when you go to a titanium arm, those are almost 40% uh, different than a stiff aluminum arm. So when you're calculating your overall spring rate, um, it's really important to know. So we have customers that uh, maybe they had uh, like and XYZ rear arms, and they built a new car and they used um, their manufacturer's arm. Say they use like a J&J &J arm or a Maxim arm. And they're not getting the same travel that they're accustomed to getting with that same rate torsion bar. And it's just because the arm is softer or stiffer, so their overall spring rate has changed. Now, if you're going from aluminum arms to titanium arms, you're really gonna have to soften your bar um, size to get the same spring rate. 
what's better or worse. Um, really, your spring rate's your spring rate. But a titanium arm is gonna have less deflection and probably be more consistent. Um, and when you get on the sprint car side and you're running the stiffer bars, your 1037s, your 1050s, um, sometimes the stiffest aluminum arm will still have a fair bit of deflection where a titanium arm won't. Um, obviously the price goes way up as well. So we don't see it as much anymore on the sprint car side. The arms are pretty um, beefed up. They don't aren't pocketed as much, but Eight or ten years ago, it was common for um, you really had to keep an eye on your rear arms because they would start to twist over time and you'd have to cycle them out because of um, how much they've deflected and twisted over time. So those are kind of all the things that uh, are encompassed to get your overall spring rate when you're trying to calculate um, your torsion bar spring rate. And uh, we hope you enjoyed tonight's topic. If you have any questions, comment below. We're always looking forward to answering your questions and help you learn more about your race car. Hope you guys got something out of that video. It's really something to um, consider, especially as we're heading into the off season and maybe you are gonna run a different brand of torsion um, arm next year. We get these questions a lot in the springtime that the car feels different. I kind of rebuilt over the off season, my car feels different. And oftentimes that'll point to, hey, I went to a different brand arm that was maybe made of a different material. Um, how it was machined or lightened was different. And now, even though you're running the same brand of torsion bars and the same rate of torsion bars, your spring rate has changed 10, 15, 20, sometimes 25%. Um, so please keep that in mind um, as you are doing your rebuild stuff. If you switch, that's fine, but you just need to know how that's going to affect your overall spring rate. So thanks for tuning in. We'll be back next Monday at nine. Please ring the bell for notifications and subscribe. Share this to all your friends. We greatly appreciate you guys watching every week and hope to see you at the track soon.